Okay, we're live. Cool. So, so I think, I think this episode really demonstrates the big question of the ages. Oh uh, yeah. Bob's love or Ringo from the Ring? Ringo. Yeah, Ringo's honestly pretty better. <laughs> I don't even know if I like her song more. I just like the way she looks more. Yeah. Of course, I'm also in. I'm also like a. Also, like into '80s rock. So. Yeah. Yes, yeah, because like you look at Bob's love. It's like I. I thought this guy was supposed to be Bob Marley, but like you said, he might not be. I. I, I don't, don't. I mean, Bob Marley's known for like having like dreadlocks and stuff, right? Yeah, I think he is. Uh, no, I've never actually seen Bob Marley. Uh, you know what? I could have looked it up instead of just assuming. But like every okay. every time I every time I hear anything about Bob Marley, it's like he's the reggae guy and he has dreadlocks and like he has the like that stereotypical like reggae hat thing. Okay, so I, I looked up the wiki. Bob or Babu is a fictional character in the Shaman King manga and anime series. An American singer that goes on the stage named Soul Bob. Okay. There's also the thing where it's like, I'm pretty sure Bob Marley, like, anytime merch is depicted, like, he's. Eh. Anytime there's, like, Bob Marley merch or whatever, like, it's sometimes associated with weed and. Yo yeah. just straight up wears a weed shirt. <laughs> I, I think it's meant to be like drawing inspiration from that, but it's not meant to be like a one-to-one -one reference, it seems. Possibly. It, it might be a reference to Bob Marley without actually being Bob Marley. Bob Hi, everybody. This is... <laughs> Hi, everybody. This is the podcast where we talk about stuff. We're... Yeah. Bob himself claims to be a real lover of Japan, although NAR confirmed Bay fans believe that Bob is based off the late Bob Marley. Okay. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so they they never said anything about this to confirm or deny it, but people just look at this and it's like, well, yeah, of course, right? Yeah. Because, <laughs> like, of course. Did you find a picture of him? Of Bob Marley or Babu? Bob Marley. Uh, you know what? I'll, I'll, do, I'll look it up. Yeah, let me just I'll look up Bob Marley. That should just, like... Uh, yeah, yeah, no, he has pretty big dreads. He does have the, like, you know, one of those, like, African, like, saw cats or whatever, though, you know, in one of these. Like, one of those okay. big, like, wool hats that... Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thing or... yeah, yeah. I see. Yeah, okay. So I'm not crazy in... Being like, oh yeah, he's, he has a, uh, he's like depicted as having dreadlocks, no, not like an afro. At least not that I'm seeing in any of these images. Okay, yeah. This, so yeah, yeah. I think we actually saw a picture of Bob Love or Soul Bob. Yeah, I, I'm just gonna keep calling him Bob Love because screw it. That's the name of the song he's singing. <laughs> yeah, it's, his actual stage name is Soul Bob, but screw it, he's Bob Love to me now. Dang it! I and think we a, saw. And it's like this song sucks. <laughs> I think we saw a picture of like Bob Love and the manga before at some point, and I just like saw this like fairly realistic looking for like anime like yo know, style, like fairly realistic like yo know, face on like a black guy with like a big afro. And I'm like, oh yeah, that's Bob Marley, right? <laughs> <laughs> and I guess that was. Kind of right, but a bit off. <laughs> uh, this is definitely isn't what I'd expect Bob Marley music to be, though. I'm I'm fairly sure of that. Yeah, like I said, I'm pretty sure Bob Marley's reggae. Yeah. Um. But yeah, um, a lot of the opening shots of this episode is Yo and Anna just sitting sitting in front of a TV watching a. Like a concert. Yeah. It's like, Yo wants to watch a big Bob Love because, I mean, look at this crazy weirdo. <laughs> Gus, he's got like an effing, like, 
friggin' like summoner's horn from Final Fantasy IX. It's nuts. Yeah, that that was weird. I was like, why is why is he got a horn popping out of his ass? <laughs> why has he got like a unicorn horn and like a jet pack and he's doing this weird space disco theme? <laughs> Why do these random one-off characters get the, the the middle episode, like, intermission thing? Yeah. Yeah, that's the real, like, funny thing. Because, like, here's the thing, like, the anime... Sorry, not the anime. The manga has sort of those two, where it's like, yo, know, like, at the end of a chapter, it'll just, like, show, like, you know, a still of, like, a character and, like, you know, a bit more details. So you can, like, you know just get a good, like, you know, view on their design and stuff. Yeah. And it's like, I'm pretty sure for the manga, they just showed the demon. That's what I would expect them to show. Yeah, like at the end of the chapter, right? Yeah. It's like, of course. Yeah, we don't usually talk about, like, the, the, like the mid-episode intermission thing, but it's kind of weird that we see just, like, these, uh, these performers instead of like the main antagonist of the episode. Yeah. We'll probably see, he'll probably be in next, uh, next week's episode. We got Bob Marley. And, sorry, not Bob Marley. We got Bob Love. We got Soul Bob. <laughs> and we got, I th what was her name? Our Ringo or something? Something Ringo. I don't remember what her first name is, but yeah, it's something Ringo. Yeah, it was just this, like, crazy, like, yo, Japanese, like, traditional rock singer with, like, crazy, like, you know, like, skull, like, hair thing with, like, bones in her bun. And she has a big skeleton on the side of her kimono. She's cool, I like her. <laughs> yeah, just as the big giant skeleton in the background, she's doing the song. Yeah, I'm like, wow. I was watching it, I'm like, what is happening? It's cool, <laughs> but... <laughs> I I think that's exactly what you're supposed to get out of it. Yeah. Why, like, them getting the mid-episode the mid -episode thing makes me feel like they're gonna show up as shamans later. I mean, he is named Soul Bob. Unfortunately, I just looked at the wiki so I could hard confirm that Bob, like, Bob Love probably is not a shaman. Okay. I I feel like it's very unlikely he'll show up later on It's like, well, a real fighter. More so, more so I can imagine Ringo being one just because of, like, her, like, how she looks. Oh uh, yeah, that that'd she be pretty looks, sick. Yeah, she looks way more like a like she would be a side character at least instead of just yeah. like a one off. Man, here's like the question though. It's like, what would she actually do? Because like Faust already did the giant skeleton thing. She'd have to find like a different gimmick. I mean, this is all assuming she even would show up. <clears throat> yeah. I don't know, she'd probably play her shamisen and, like, like it'd be music-themed, which we've had plenty yeah. of. But... It's it's honestly kind of a shame, because as much as I love Faust, like, it'd be really cool to have, like, you know, like, a super traditional necro-dancer. Like, necromancer yeah. bard character. Yeah. Uh, like, music powers is one of those things I don't usually get sick of, unless it's portrayed really lame. Yeah, like, man, I'm trying to think if there's any characters who've had, like, music powers before that's been, like, dull or uninteresting or war that's just, like, sucked. And, like, not a lot's really coming to mind. Bose is pretty lame. Yeah, I, I don't know, like, <laughs> Bose is pretty lame, but at the same time, I also really like Bose. They're just really fun. Yeah, but, like... <laughs> They're the way they're portrayed, it's like their music powers aren't even good. Yeah, they're like, you know, the, like, kicking, like, you know, just, like, punching bag or whatever. <laughs> like, yeah, they're meant I, to suck, but they got the Chibi Chibi Morio. <laughs> which sucks. <laughs> yeah, but it's really fun, though. <laughs> See, that's, that's the thing. It's like, if somebody's gonna use the power of music for me to like it, it's gotta be good. <laughs> I, yeah, I guess that's fair. I don't know. I like bows a lot. They're pretty good. 
Like they've ca- like first appearance wavers, second appearance. All right, now they're growing on me. <laughs> like I, I enjoy like the like uh, Friday Night Funkin' and like the like music based games are like pretty cool. Where it's like rap battles or like guitar yeah. battles or whatever, like that kind of thing. Like I, I suck at Friday Night Funkin'. I've tried, uh, but I, I can appreciate it from a distance. Man, I already need to, like, make a bard or something at some point for, like, something. I, I don't know, I feel like I could do a lot of really fun stuff with that. I would love to play a bard, but I, but, the see, the thing where I'm like, oh yeah, but it's gotta be good, I apply that to myself, because I'm not musically talented, and I know bards yeah. don't have to just play music, but that's how I envision a bard. I, I feel like... I well, of course I'd be like playing music or anything, but it's like if I play a bard in like D and D, it'd be like yo, like oh yeah, yo, you just reference like rock or whatever, and you just get to name your attacks after dumb band names and stuff. Yeah, but I would want to like, I don't know, I w- like I'm not good at improvising. If I was gonna be a bard, I would want to be able to like come up with a song on the spot and just make up like lyrics or whatever. Just call every attack you do Chibi Chibi Wario. God, no. <laughs> every song is the same, except for when it's not. Like I said, it's gotta be good. <laughs> oh, man. But yeah, so... So this episode, continuing with the, like, flashback arc, the Orzian Revar something? Ozarian? Oh, so, uh, no, I forgot what it's called, too. It's the name of the mountain. Something, vo- uh, Vore, 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 something. Yeah, yeah, that was actually one of the things I had to bring up, because I was, like, reading through the manga, and there's, like, a translation note that, like, you know, it's, like, the name of the mountain, because it's, like, translates into something like Fear Mountain or Mountain of Fear. Yeah, something like that. Apparently it's, like, it's the same kanji that's used in, like, Anna's name somehow. So it's, like, she has this kind of, like, yo, metaphorical connection. Where she's also kind of this quote-unquote mountain of fear they reasoned. Because she is like, yo, all these insecurities and she's, like, afraid of her own, like, power and stuff. Right. Huh. Yes, it was something interesting like that. Also, apparently, like, Yo's name translates to something like Leaf, which is supposed to be referring to nature, and Tao's name relates to something like Leaf King. Okay. <laughs> so he's like, oh, he's the king of nature. <laughs> I mean, it's fitting. Yeah, it's fitting, yeah. Ow! <laughs> Cat? Yeah, that's like, I feel like that was worth, like, pulling out, but yeah... <laughs> So, big plot of this episode is that, like, Yo finally, like, starts getting through to Anna, surprisingly. Yeah. Uh... Yeah, they start, like, Yo kind of connected a bit, and Yo is like, oh yeah, Yo, Ringo acts all scary, but inside Yo, she's just, like, putting on this show to hide her insecurity, and Yo's like, oh, kind of like you, I guess. Yeah, and then and, it gets all mad, yeah. and Yo's like, man, it sucks that you can read minds. <laughs> yeah. And she's like, what? Why do you keep, like, you know, going after her or something? And you see, like, you know, her come to some kind of realization, because, like, it's presumed that she, like, reads the answer. And it's just a cute little scene, and it's like... Man, this, this like, arc's, like, really starting to get me, right? I, I feel like it, it's, it was supposed to be something like, uh... Like, Yo's thinking about how she's supposed to be his fiance or something, and she gets all embarrassed about it. I I took it as, you know, she, like, since they actually did care about her, and she's like, oh, oh, jeez, oh, no, yeah, feelings. Well, yeah, same idea. Yeah. <laughs> um... So yeah, she just like slaps him and kicks him out of the room. <laughs> yeah, there's there's have their little like talk between like you know the wall because they like just shove the door in the way, 
and you know yo's like hey well like come to the fireworks or no he's like well come to the festival Festival. or whatever yeah Yeah. new year's festival yeah and he's like you know it's like maybe if you like go out there you then like you know take control of your powers and like you know say you're like resolved to like you know change and stuff and that'll like help you out and i feel like this is the one sticking point of the episode because like it's an innocent enough idea but it just comes out of nowhere and boy is it the worst idea ever yeah yo doesn't know that i was gonna that's what i was gonna say is like it's a sweet gesture from yo but we soon learn that it's a terrible idea Oh, yeah, it just makes things a bit awkward, where it's like, you go back, and Yo's like, oh, yeah, let's go to the festival together, and it's like, oh, no, Yo, don't. Yeah, uh, Anna's <laughs> caretaker, uh, Yo's, Yo's grandmother, sees them walking away, and she's like, wait, I can't believe they're doing this, I, I actually can't let this happen. Yeah. And then she explains why it's such a bad idea. Yeah, if, if they had talked to her caretaker first, then this could all be averted. <laughs> yeah. And they could have, like, like if Anna's, yeah. Anna's surrounded by people, negative emotions and whatever, it's like, she will just start manifesting demons. <sighs> <clears throat> yeah, it's like... Like, if they had talked to her, then they would have been, like, stuck at home. You know, maybe Anna would have, like, tried to run or something, but, like, they could have still had, like, a sweet moment where they, like, you know, figured things out and, like, you know, found some compromise or whatever. <laughs> yeah. And Matamuni's like, no, I'll, I'll, I'll go with them to, t- to watch after them. Like, if, like, if this doesn't happen, then Anna might never open up. Yeah. I, yeah, that's, like, the big point. It's, like, here's the thing, it's, like, this is like that's like my one complaint it's not really like that distracting it's just like i feel like it's like worth bringing up because like holy crap this is like ma mune's probably gonna die because of this he's definitely going to die <laughs> let's let's be real mata is going to die next episode yeah um Just yo like, uh yeah l- but like i said yo yo doesn't know any better He's like 10. Yeah, yeah. I think that's like something they've done a really good job of like getting across in these episodes is that it's like, this isn't the Yo we know. This is like Yo back when he's like, yo, like a younger kid and he's like, yo, really like reckless and like immature and he's like more outspoken and like stuff like that, yo. He acts more on impulse, but also. Yeah. Also, he literally probably doesn't know anything about, like, if Anna's around negative emotions, that's what causes her to summon demons. Yeah, this is, like, yo before he's, like, chilled out as much. So he's just like, yeah, let's just go (laughs) to the thing, and it's like, oh, oh no, we accidentally created the biggest demon of all. (laughs) The biggest. (laughs) Yeah, because the, like... As the that... caretaker says, like, once they amass 108 wishes through, like, something or whatever, then Anna's going to, like, explode with power and just summon all these demons. And there's something where it's like, you know, she sends up summoning, like, 1,080 spirits. Hey, what a coincidence. Yeah, 1,080 roughly, but that sure is a lot. I wonder if the demon's going to turn into her summoning beads. Oh, that'd be really cool. I mean, it seems yeah. pretty obvious. Uh, like, you say that, but they're, like, pushing this number a lot. Yeah, but it also just, like, Anna later in the series is like, oh yeah, my 1,080... Be- bead rosary or whatever yeah like specifically <laughs> oh yeah you have to remember it's also like a number and like i think it's like Hindu 108 yes. no it's like buddhism yeah yeah and it's meant to be like an extension of that <laughs> but yeah they saw the biggest demon and mamune just shows up and he's like yeah don't worry i've got you <laughs> 
and we like we get a quick like throwaway explanation where it's like yo yeah apparently mom used to feel like cows like cat and stuff and we he like that. yeah we know that a like he sees that they've just got like guardian spirits around the city and how's just stripped like okay yeah i'll give you this necklace and when you die, you can become one of those, which seems to be the explanation for how I can touch things. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mat Matamune seems to have in bypassed death entirely. It just turned into, like, a like a physical spirit. Yeah, like, the mechanics of this aren't really, like, explained or anything, but it's, like... It seems like the general, like, idea is that Ma Mooney is basically like an oversoul, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, essentially, he, he... he's just like an oversoul just walking around, and, you know, once he runs out of energy, that's it, you know? Which is also why, instead of, like, which is probably why he deleted the sword he used so quickly after he uh, destroyed that demon. Oh, yeah, that makes, like, way more sense now. <laughs> Yeah, because the the more uh, Furioku he uses, the quicker he'll disappear. Because as soon as he runs out, he vanishes. Yeah. Like, he'll proper die. So this is, like, this is the big thing, right? Because this is, like, the big stakes of the fight. It's like, yo, yeah, Ma Mune's, like, fine this dude to try and, like, protect Yo and Anna. And if he runs out of energy, he'll just straight up die. So yeah. he's, like... He's trying to finish this thing off quickly and efficiently. He's like, okay, yeah, yo. He, like, forms his big sword. He, like, slashes into the thing's chest. And he's like, alright, I'm just gonna, like, blast this guy with a large chunk of my power and get this over with. And the demon, like, rips its arm off and so he can, like, free himself from the sword. And Mama, like, wastes a ton of energy doing that. And he's like, yo, damn it, like, yo... That's, like, a really, like, big waste. Oh, jeez, are you even gonna be able to finish this guy off with what I have left? Yeah. I I feel like what's gonna happen is he's, uh, Matamune's gonna, like, pour all of his w remaining energy into, like, a weapon that Yo gets. Yeah. Like, I don't think Yo's gonna be able to, like, wield Matamune or anything, but I think, like... I don't know, maybe he will. Maybe it'll be, like, a weird thing where it's like, Yo's used an oversoul before, but he still doesn't know what it is or how it works, right? Yeah, it's just a, a fluke, and most of it was Matamune's energy. Yeah, because that's the thing, big thing that's been on my mind these few episodes, It's that, like, alright, this flashback, no matter what happens, still has to, like, connect back to what we know, where, like, yo... Yo fights Silva, and he's like, oh, what's an Oversoul? How does that work? Oh, jeez, what even is this? Yeah, the answer is that Yo will do it on accident, or with so much help that he doesn't realize what it is. Oh, yeah, because, like, cause, like, he has to, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. Like, at this point, it's like, yo, there's, like, there's no, like, it has to be, like, a fluke. <laughs> But yeah, so like, fight goes off, they're like, fighting off this demon, and it's just like, you know, it's getting wounded, it's starting to get worn out, and it's suddenly like, oh yeah, if I just grab Anna and make her miserable, I can get more power, right? Yep, <clears throat> because his, his, uh, his whole thing is that he's powered by all these negative emotions that come from Anna. Yeah, he's, like, trying to get her to summon more demons so he can power himself up. Yeah, he's like, oh, look at how awful I am. This is all your... I'm the result of all your negative emotions. Aren't I terrible? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I feel like we should probably, like, mention real quick. Like, first off, like, the scans I'm reading pretty directly translate the demons as just Oni. They just call them Oni. Ah. And I feel like that honestly makes a lot of sense, because it's like, I you mean... know... He looks like one. Yeah. This is most <laughs> things I see a lot where it's like, you know, a lot of places like take Oni and they'll just be like, oh yeah, it's a demon. And it's yeah. like just a quick, easy like translation. But yeah, that's like a bit more specific. Well, it's because Oni is a very specifically Japanese term. 
But yeah. in, in he, if you translate it to demon, it's like, oh, I, I understand what that what this is exactly immediately. Yeah, that's like a big thing with like Kimetsu no Yaiba, where it's like all the monsters are kind of like Oni or they're like standing for like other yokai and stuff. And it's like they all just are like, oh yeah, no, these are just all demons. Yeah, just just blanket term, just go for it. Yeah. Yeah, because of course. It just, yeah, it's just easy to understand tra uh, translation. Yeah, I think that does make sense for why they're, like, you know, so, like, weird and, like, ugly looking and stuff. Because, like, because of course, right? They're Oni. Yeah. Yeah. That brings me to Nartha. It's like, this guy's design is just, like, what? He's ugly. <laughs> yeah, he's a, like, ugly, weird mother effer. But all I can see is he's just, like... Because he's calf wearing this, I don't know if it's like a skin pattern or what, but it's like this like wrestler's like leotard or something, you know, it's like this weird like one piece like outfit, it just looks like a weird tough guy muscle shirt, it's like... He's like super fat. Yeah, it's, it's a very weird design, it's very odd. Like, I can't say I like it that much, but it's definitely interesting. <laughs> It definitely feels disgusting. Also, he's like glowing and stuff. Yeah, he's got this weird glowing face on his chest. <laughs> but yeah, so he just grabs Anne and just runs off with her. And Yo's like, oh, well, crap, I need to like save her. He's like, hey, Mom Mune, just, you know, don't like follow me. You're going to die. I'll throw this on my own. And that's when Yo just taps to run into the effing, like, guy from the store. Yeah, Old man he's... Zoro. Yeah, he's like, oh, fancy meeting you here. Well, I owe you a favor, so I'll get you to the, wherever you need to go. <laughs> yeah, I'll save you with my friggin' car. <laughs> my big truck. Yeah, heck yeah. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, I think that's, that's about where it stops, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, that's where the episode ends. Uh, but yeah, I really like this one. Like, it feels like this arc's really, like, picking up pace and going in an interesting direction. I was... I enjoy it. I was kind of hoping it would be over. I don't know what the heck... Yeah, I, was, I thought this would be, like, the last one, and I was, like... <laughs> Adel, in hindsight, that was kind of, like, weird to just expect, but, you know... Well, yeah, unfortunately, but... the problem is that unfortunately this means the next episode is probably going to be mostly fighting. Yeah, the next episode's probably going to be like the rest of the fight scene. It's probably going to end things off, I imagine. Yeah. So here's the thing. It's like, I was like ring through the manga scans and I like got to the chapter list for the next volume. And it's like... We've been going around, like, you know, three or four chapters an episode, roughly. And there's something like four or five chapters left in the volume. And the volume's just called Ozarian Revar Epilogue. Hmm. So it's like, it feels like... I don't know how, but next, like, episode probably will be the end of this, yeah. Probably. I'll probably, like, condense some stuff down a bit. Well, it seems like all there is left to do is to go to the mountain and fight the demon, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's like, I don't know, it seems reasonable if that's where it'll end. Seems straightforward enough. I'm just like... I'm a bit worried, because I haven't really been keeping up with like how kind of like chapters each episode has covered. But it seems like that's going to be a bit tighter of a pace than I was expecting, right? And I'm yeah. getting, like, a few little flashbacks from the early part of the series. I mean, it, I'm fine with I'm fine with this arc. I do wish it would go back to present day, though. Oh, uh, yeah. I, I feel like, you know, it's like... I don't think it's outlived its welcome for me yet, but it's like, you know... I think if it went on for, like, three or four more episodes, it'd get close. If that makes sense. Yeah. My issue is, I, I just want to see... Like, we're, we've kind of jumped over to B-plot. Yeah, um, yeah, kind of. Like, this whole thing's kind of like B-plot, but it's really good B-plot. 
Yeah, it's it's good. I just I want to go back to the main story. Yeah. Rin is still dying out on the ground somewhere, and we still don't know if Yo's even going back into the tournament. <laughs> like, he probably won't, but, like, I don't know what we're gonna do with that. And that's the weird thing, because it's like, that's like the immediate thing that's going on, and it feels way more interesting right now to me. Yeah. I mean, it's fine getting this backstory about Yo and Anna and Matamune, because Matamune's yeah. rad. Yeah, Matamune's um, the best. <clears throat> oh, yeah, I guess, I guess my, uh, my, uh, Matamune is a demon, uh, thing is just completely off base. Yeah, I know it's a good theory. There's like, there are points in this where it's like, oh yeah, of course. And it's like, eh, don't, mm, maybe, eh. Yeah, made sense to me. Yeah, I, I thought it was like a good theory, yeah. I forget why, I think there's like some line that does reference like Hal's hatred or something being infused or something like that. I don't know, I'm, I'm probably like misremembering, but yeah. Yeah, it seems like it's just sort of like a guardian spirit or something, which is... That's the thing, it's like, this is something we could have predicted, because it was, like, introduced just this episode. <laughs> so, yeah, I guess, any final thoughts or whatever? Uh, nah, not really. Yeah, I, I kind of wish we had more to say about this, but it's like... Yeah, we, like, there's not much to really talk about outside of Bob's love. <laughs> It's it's nice to see that there's actual chemistry between Yo and Anna. Yeah. Yeah, and I feel like not, that's like, yeah. Yeah, and it's not just like, oh, they're together because they were like somebody arranged for them to be. It's like, no, they like Anna's kind of cold, but I mean, she's like that now. Yeah. I think that's the big thing. It's like I honestly really do like Yo and Anna's relationship a lot. Yeah. And I also really like how it's not just a dumb, like, oh no, just ask her or whatever stupid anime thing. It's like, yeah, no, no, they're just together. They're just yeah. like a couple, just straight up, you know? <laughs> like, they're just an item and everyone else is just like, alright, well, I, I guess that's that. Yeah. So there's like, the, the, the scene where they, they have like the wall between them and like, they're talking to each other, and like, Yo is like trying to get her to cheer up and is like, hey, let's go like make a wish to fix your problem. And if that doesn't work, then I'll become the shaman king and fix it that way. And like Anna's like crying because I assume she's never gotten this level of like care from anybody in her life. Yeah. Yeah, she like doesn't know how to like deal with someone being so nice to her. Yeah. So yeah, give me a second, I'll just move on to Ghost Game Remar. I assume that's like the last we have to really say about this. Yeah, it's a lot to say. Yeah.